What up guys, That Comic Awesome here, doing another review, doing X-Men Blue 22. <clears throat> this is uh, part four of the uh, Poison X uh, series, and um, outside of the annual, I've uh, I've been enjoying it. Um, it. The 21 kind of had, was narrated by uh, Cyclops, and it gave this really good sense of like urgency that he's looking for his dad that he feel like you really get this like strong feeling from him that you know he's worried he's gonna fail this and that um the venom uh, last issue was uh obviously narrated by venom and it was kind of talking about how there's more to the symbiote relationship versus you know uh than what a lot of people assume but then this one is narrated by Gene and you get some really good little tidbits from it and I have not followed the X-Men Blue storyline that much but this like the last couple issues have made me really care about these characters like I'm shocked like I've always heard this, um, you know, kind of the, the X-Men Blue team is, you know, it's the teenagers, they're, they're a little more millennial, not even millennial, like, they're more of the SJW kind of crowd, and I actually really enjoyed this, um, and it surprised me. So, uh, to kind of catch everyone up so far in the annual, uh, Scott Summers was talking to his dad. Uh, who is the captain of the Star Jammers, some space pirates. Uh, they were attacked by some bounty hunters wearing symbiotes um, that led the X-Men to recruit Venom and go on an intergalactic adventure. That was in the annual, and it had a lot of eye-rolling moments in it because it, there, were conven there was a lot of convenient dialogue to just front the story forward. After that... Once, once the, once the storyline started, it actually got very good. Um, X Men Twenty One kind of showed the um, uh, the X Men and Venom uh, go to this spaceport where they have to uh, they confront some some symbiote um, bounty hunters and uh, track down the Star Jammer ship. Uh, the last issue of Venom showed the the X-Men confront a seller of symbiotes and then uh, through kind of an accident uh, become fused with symbiotes um, giving them kind of more enhanced powers and the fact just the thought of like you know a mutant with a symbiote is kind of really uh, an interesting you know an interesting thing like how do you handle that like how would the mute like a mutant ability um, be enhanced because that's what the Simba does it enhances the natural ability of the person uh but also it fuses with any special abilities that um that person has just like the venom symbiote has kind of the the latent spider-man um powers because when it fused with peter it was able to kind of take all that in so now uh you have the x-men um dealing with that so let's go ahead and jump in uh you kind of first off this first page i liked it kind of had like a little bit of an anime feel you get to see killer thrill um without her symbiote face and she definitely looks like you know some some anime girl which again that's kind of cool um so they're they're on their way to the buyers for the Star Jammers, uh, which again is uh, Cyclops' dad. Um, and they're hit by something. And I kind of thought this was neat. Uh, it's a big chunk of ice, but like the ice is like fused. So obviously, you know, it has something to do with uh, Bobby. And of course, they kind of used that as a projectile to, um, to board this ship. Uh, meanwhile, Jean uses her psychic abilities to kind of prevent these low-level thugs um, from calling for help. 
meanwhile, everyone kind of takes out, you know, a little bit of a brawl. But you get this, again, Gene coming in and, you know, kind of narrating. And she's like, uh, this is weird. And this coming from the girl who leads the X-Men. So you know that means something. Um, we know that we're going to return to our time at some point. We just have, uh, we haven't even had time to prop, uh, process that properly. And again, what I think I really like about these narration points is it makes me care. It's all about the caring. Like, why read a story if you don't care about the character? It's, I mean, it's crucial. And this does that. Like, I care about, like, these characters. Now, of course, uh, I think it's funny that, like, Bobby is consistently, like, the butt of every joke. But he always comes in with something cheesy. So, he says, you know, Operation Titanic was a titanic success, right? And then, you know, Venom's like, great kid. Real, real impressive. And we live through this. I'll get you a space cookie. You know, just little things like that. Um, so, Venom, obviously, kind of not happy um, with the fact that the X-Men have not given up their symbiotes. Because, again, he sees um, people who just use symbiotes to enhance their abilities as um, almost like a poacher. Uh, he says here, uh, to them... The symbiotes are just tools, just weapons, a lot like the way uh, they are to you, X-Men. And then Beast kind of corrects him. He's like, look, we're using the symbiotes because they want us to, like, they don't want to leave us. They're, they want our help kind of stopping this, like, symbiote trade um, that's going on. So... Cyclops again kind of taking a little bit of a darker turn <clears throat> because again he's wanting his he wants his dad to make sure his dad's all right and what I like here is is again Jean's dialogue that she's narrating uh, because she's psychically linked so she says here um, it's Scott I'm worried about most these symbiotes enhance emotional um, states as much as they enhance our powers He's angry, scared, worried about his father. You know, of course, what's kind of neat, too, is, like, he's able to almost, like, turn his, you know, laser into, like, blow torches in his fingers. Um, she said, and thinking, uh, and he's thinking about revenge both uh, before he knows whether uh, his dad is all right or not. I guess the benefit, um, that's the one benefit of um, a permanent psychic rapport uh, you know exactly how many steps your best friend is from uh, stepping off into the abyss. And it's kind of, again, it kind of gives a little bit of a, a nice deep relationship too between like Gene and Scott. That they they care about each other and it makes me care about them too. So, you know, Bobby makes some some kind of joke remarks. But again, what I love is... They're not trying to, like, hide it anymore. Like, it's not like, oh, Bobby, you know. No, Bobby is, the is like, the team goof. And, and he does it great. And so when he, now when he makes, a, like, a line and says something stupid, I don't think, like, oh, my gosh. Like, I can't believe he's saying something stupid. I go, well, that's Bobby. He says something stupid. Um, so they kind of go off. They figure out where the Star Jammers are. Um, Cyclops is going to go to the Star, find the Star Jammers. Everyone else is going to uh, go find the space pirates. Um, so when Gene, when Cyclops leaves, uh, she says, "Still, I can't shake this feeling that I'm never going to see Scott again. I can't help but think that I'll never say, or I never said goodbye." And that's interesting, right there. The fact that. You know, she's she's kind of thinking this. It's a little bit of foreshadowing. Um, but, again, it, it kind of... If you're... If this is... If this book is permanent and, like, what is happening, it really makes me wonder where this series is going. And it really gives me some, like, interest of, like, oh, this is taking some really serious turns that are 
are going to affect um, some storylines, and I like that. So I'm going to skip some stuff because I want to get down to um, towards the end. So Cyclops finds his dad, uh, and again, look at that mustache. That's the kind of mustache that makes you hash browns in the morning. That, that's the kind of mustache that is. It's good. It's a classic mustache. Um, but then uh, a ship approaches. They think it's the buyers of the the Star Jammers, <clears throat> but it turns out it is not. Finally, after this is now part four of the Poison X series. Anybody who's read Venomverse should know that this is supposed to be a continuation of that, but now four issues in, we finally get Poisons back. Um, so again, there's a lot going on. Also, I don't want to... So this, uh, Venom comes out next week, but then you have this Venomized, and Venomized 2, and then... In two weeks, this X-Men Blue 23, which I assume doesn't have anything to do with this storyline, but it looks like a younger Wolverine and Storm. So I wonder if Wolverine and Storm are going to be kind of joining the X-Men Blue team through some time rift or whatever, which I'd be interested to see. Um, I actually really like this. Like I, I've been enjoying X-Men Blue. Um, go out and read it. It's it's good stuff. Uh, start at the I would say start at twenty one, um, or go back to the annual, or watch my reviews. Either one, but subscribe over here. Uh, watch some more videos. Hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you guys think, and I'll see you next time.